Now let's see this question. This question came in gate 2014. Gate 2014 for one mark. Okay. The question is, let G be a graph with n vertices and m edges. What is the tightest upper bound on the running time of depth first search DFS on G? Okay. The given condition is that in G, the representation of G is as adjacency matrix. Okay. So, you all might be knowing that any graph can be represented in two different ways. Okay. One is called adjacency list representation and another one is called adjacency matrix representation. So what happens is that in adjacency list representation when any graph is there let's say there are three edges there are three nodes and let's say there are two edges something like this okay. Now, in adjacency list representation, we represent the graph something like this that there is a so let's say this is one, this is two, this is three, okay, and there then there will be pointers that okay, so one, what are the neighbors of one? So one has neighbors two and three, okay, so. 2 and 3 will be in this list. Now, uh, what about 2? Two? 2 has only one edge, which is 2 to 1. And 3 is having also one edge, 3 to 1. So, this is the way in which adjacency list representation is done. Okay. Now, you all also might be knowing about adjacency matrix representation. Actually, this takes uh, somewhat more space and this representation is in the form of a matrix so the matrix size will be actually n by n where n is the number of vertices so here three vertices are there so basically the matrix size is going to be 3 cross 3 so this is going to be a 3 cross 3 matrix and what is the uh, uh, way in which we fill the vertices so the first row the will and first column actually is giving us information about the first vertex the second row and second column is going to give representation uh, information about the second vertex and similarly third row and third vertex is uh, column is going to give the information about the third vertex now what is this information this information is about the edges okay so we can say that we can fill this matrix with something like uh, 0 or 1 so 0 will represent that there are no edges among that pair and 1 will represent that there is an edge. So, see 2 to 2 there is no edge, 1 to 1 there is no edge. So, definitely these vertices are going to be, these places are going to be filled with 0. Now, we will see, let us see, among 1 and 2 there is an edge. So, here it will be 1. So, 1 to 2 there is an edge and actually 2 to 1 also we can say that there is an edge. So, basically this will be a symmetric matrix uh, as we will see. And what about 1 to 3 edge? So, 1 to 3, this place is going to be, uh, there is 1 and 3 to 1, this place also there is going to be 1. Rest places will be 0 because we see that there are no edges between 2 and 3. So, 2 to 3, there is no edge, 3 to 2, there is no edge. Okay. So, this is the edge matrix representation. Now, what they are saying is that when we are representing the matrix in adjacency matrix representation we are representing the graph sorry in adjacency matrix representation then what is going to be the worst case running time for depth first search now you all might be knowing that worst case running time of dfs is basically theta n plus m but here is the trick actually this this sort of time complexity comes when we are representing the matrix in this form as you see list representation why because see what in dfs we are going to what we are going to do we are going to iterate through all the vertices and for each of the vertex the only thing which we are we want is that okay uh, what are the what are the neighbors of those vertices now once we know that we all if we have the number of neighbors 
directly then if number of neighbors is d then in theta d time we can simply find the number of neighbors in adjacent list representation but that is not the case in uh, this case uh, adjacent matrix representation here if you have to find what are the neighbors of vertex 1 then you have to scan through the entire row okay and let's change the colors so once you once you scan the entire row then actually this is going to be not theta n rather theta d theta uh, n not theta d rather it is going to be theta n so it is proportional to the number of vertices in the uh, graph okay so in this case n and, uh, and n is going to be there okay and for each vertex we are going to do number of uh, neighbors and when we iterate through all the neighbors then summation is going to be basically twice m why because let's say 1 to 3 this thing is coming and 3 to 1 again this thing is coming so actually two times the number of edges that is going to be the total running time and that's why it can be represented as theta n plus m but but let's observe in this case in this case okay n for each node what we are going to do is that for each node we are not only going to have uh, just uh, in theta d time rather we are going to have to we are going to uh, have to scan the entire row and that's why it is going to take basically n, n time and this we are going to do for each and every node again and again and again so overall it is going to be basically theta n square time so in this case depth first search is going to take theta n square time so the answer is c